Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm just gonna be talking through how I created this realistic looking red panda using pastel pencils, because I got a lot of comments when I posted this picture on Instagram from you guys asking me to do a tutorial on how I created it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. It's gonna to be a very chilled out video, and I'm just gonna talk you through step by step how to draw realistically and how to draw animals in particular. So I'm going to be using my Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils and pastel matte paper for this. As always, the materials will be listed out in the description. And now when I draw animals, I usually start off with the background and I tend to do a background that's quite simple and even out of focus so that the attention is still on the animal. I like the animal to be the focal point of the drawing. So I tend to keep the background quite simplistic. And when you're trying to do a blurred out background, try and include as little detail as possible to get that really fuzzy look. If you include lots of detail, then it's not going to look out of focus. So I'm just going in and I used a reference to do this drawing and there was just a green sort of out of focus background with a few highlights and a few brown tone shadows. So I used a few different greens and a brown and a blue just to create this patchy looking background and I'm simply just blending it out with my fingers. And when I actually applied the pencil, you could see that I did it quite messily. I wasn't being too neat because pastels are really good at blending out on their own with like a finger or a blending stamp here. They're really, they really easily blend out. You don't have to work very hard with them at all. So you can afford to be a little messier. Now the key to getting a really nice soft out of focus background is to layer, keep layering because the more layers you add, the smoother it is going to be. And with each layer that you add, the easier it is to blend out. As you can see, this layer blends out a lot easier than the first one did. And that's because there's more chalk down, more pastel on the paper to actually blend out. So if you wanna get a out of focus background, make sure you add multiple layers. Your first layer isn't going to look the greatest, but once you add your second and third layer, it will get better and better. I'm also just going in to finish off the background with a few highlights and that's another thing I love about pastel pencils is that you can layer lighter colours on top of darker colours which I find really really great, it's something that you can't do with a lot of other mediums like coloured pencil which I work in a lot so that's one of the reasons I love pastels. But really backgrounds are very simple to do with pastel pencils, especially getting an out of focus one. Now let's start with the red panda with the animal and I started off with my kneaded eraser just to remove some of that graphite sketch so that you don't see that peeping through the pastels. You don't wanna see your gray outlines peeping through your pastels. That's not gonna make it look very realistic. And I start off by doing a base layer of pencils throughout the red panda and I'm just blocking in the main colors for the fur with my first layer, I never worry about getting in all of the details. As you can see here, I'm not trying to get in all of the different fur strokes. I'm just sort of blocking in the colors, once again, very sketchily. And I don't worry about being messy because once again, I know I'm going to be blending this out with a blending stump. So this step is just about blocking in the main color for each area. It's very important that you try to get a good contrast in your piece. So you'll see that I've got really light areas and also on the other end of the scale, I've got some really dark shadows in as well. So try and make sure that you're getting your dark colors as dark as they need to be. And the same with your highlights. I work on the tongue, just getting in some pink tones and some darker browns and reds. And then I just go in with a clean blending stump and I just blend all of this out. And this is really just to get a foundation base and a foundation color down on the red panda before we add all of the details. Now, before we move on to adding all of the details, if you wanna see how I created the red panda drawing in real time, as well as get access to over 300 other real time tutorials, then make sure you check out my Patreon. On there, like I said, you can get access to tons of different tutorials for pastels, colored pencils, charcoal, watercolors, and lots of other mediums. 
It's just a small amount per month and you will get instant access to all of those tutorials. And with each tutorial, I offer the reference, the sketch outline and a materials list. And each tutorial is with full narration so that you really can follow along with me. I'll leave a link at the top of the description if you wanna check that out. Now let's move on to the fun part, which is adding in all of the details. And now this is the part that's really gonna make your drawing look super realistic. One of the main tips I'd have for this stage is to keep your pencils as sharp as you can so that you can get in all of those fine details and really focus on getting in each section of fur, looking at the direction the fur is going in and look at the length of the fur because for example, the fur for the ears is a lot longer than the fur on like the nose area of the red panda. So keep an eye on the different sections of fur and how they change in length and how they change in direction. That's really important. Also, don't just use one color, try and get in some different colors with the fur. I'm starting off with this cream tone to get in the highlighted fur first, but I will be using all of the other colors that we used in our base layer to also add in some more detail as well. Now you can go in any order you want to because like I said, light colors do layer really well on top of dark with pastels. But I like to start with the lightest color and then work up to adding some shadows. And if you need to soften anything out, you can just go over it with your finger, like I'm doing just to soften it out a bit more, or with a blending stump. So it's really easy to soften out details with the pastels and then add some more if you need to get some even more details in there. Also to make your animal drawings look more realistic, make sure you're paying attention to the eyes, see if there's any highlights in the eyes that you need to get in and make sure that you're adding in all of the sort of shadows and details around the eyes because the eyes are such an important part of the animal and if you don't get them right then your animal probably won't look very realistic. So I always try and make sure that I spend a lot of time getting the eyes really correct to the reference, especially getting in things like those highlights. You can really start to see at this point how the layering process really helps to give it that photorealistic look. For example, doing that first layer really helped to get a foundation layer and colors blocked in so that you can just go in and add in a few details on top and it will transform it into a really realistic looking panda. I think this is also the quickest way of doing it. This drawing didn't take me very long. It was a couple of hours, I think two or three hours. It wasn't very long and I find that working with pastels is a lot quicker than other mediums because of the fact that you can layer and blend very quickly using this medium. I also make sure that I'm spending the same amount of time on each area. I don't just spend a load of time on the animal's face and then neglect the body. I make sure that I'm adding details throughout the body as well. Also little areas like the tongue, make sure that you're focusing on them. And one of my favorite parts to do with this drawing was the whiskers. I find that it really helps pull it together and make it look realistic. And it's so easy to do whiskers with pastels. You can see that I just went over the black fur with that white pencil and it just showed up so well. So I really, really like using pastels, especially for animal drawing. It's sort of perfectly suited to drawing animals, I think. And then I finished off this particular drawing by blocking in the log and the branch and blending it out and building up multiple layers, just like I did with every other part of this drawing. So to finish off this video, I'm just gonna go over the most important things that I think there are when working with pastels. Firstly, I think layering is so important. So make sure that you don't just do one layer. You'll get a much better result if you keep building it up, especially if you're doing an out of focus background, it will look a lot softer if you build up more layers. And when you're doing something like fur, that really benefits from doing multiple layers. Also, you can work light over dark, so don't feel limited by pastels in any way. You can add lighter colors, so you don't need to preserve your highlights as much as you do with other mediums. 
but I hope you guys enjoyed this short little walkthrough of how I created this drawing. Once again, if you want to see the real time for this, it is available on my Patreon. Here you can see the final drawing. Also, if you want to keep up to date with my latest artwork that I'm creating, then feel free to follow me on Instagram at Kirsty's Art. A link to that will be in the description. And also, I have a food Instagram account called So Berry Vegan, where I post vegan food ideas. So if you feel like checking that out, then those will both be in the description. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even take that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.